coming up on Network Africa. Today's government declares three days of national mourning following an attack that left 28 soldiers dead. Sudan's military council suspends talks with the opposition to insist on dismantling protesters' barricades. Plus, Malawi's Electoral Commission begins distributing ballot materials to polling stations, assures citizens of a free and fair election. Hello and a warm welcome to the program. I'm Temiola Shobowale. We begin today in Niger where the Islamic State has claimed responsibility for an attack that left more than two dozen soldiers dead. The bodies of 11 more soldiers have been found, bringing the total number killed in the ambush on Tuesday to 28. The troops were patrolling Tongo Tongo village near the border with Mali when armed men opened fire on them. Meanwhile, the government has declared three days of national mourning following the attack. The authorities have not said the authorities earlier didn't know who carried out the attack, but the Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. It was in the area where U.S. Special Forces and four Niger troops were killed by Islamic militants in 2017. This year, jihadists have stepped up activities in the Sahel region, especially along the borders between Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso. Let's get more on this story from security expert David Otto. Thanks for joining us on the program. David, considering the fact that Niger and other countries in the Sahel have been facing a growing militant threat from several Islamist groups, how come the army was caught napping with this attack? Uh, thank you, Taliuna. I don't think the, uh, the, the army was caught up in. I think uh, what we fail to understand is this is a war zone. Mm. Um, it may not be a conventional war, but you know there is war. There are people being killed every day. Jihadists are being killed by uh, the uh, forces of the JSTN, which is the G5 Sahel. Um, the um, uh, military is also being killed. Uh, this is an area which is, you know, if I may use the word, infested uh, with several jihadist groups uh, linked to the Islamic State. Uh, especially um, the, a faction known as the Islamic State of the Greater Sahara. Uh, they are also linked to uh, groups within uh, Al-Qaeda. So um, I don't believe that uh, they, they were caught napping. This is a very serious uh, threat within the area. Oh, David, Niger is part of a five-nation anti-insurgency force operating in the Sahel, the G5 Sahel as it's called. It's backed by a 3,000-strong French force. How successful has this force been in tackling insecurity in the region, would you say? I think the success of a military uh, you know, strategy like the GSN, as we call it, uh, would be determined by its last battle, and which is what we're experiencing. We're talking about uh, the, the same area where uh, Chungo Chungo, where U.S. Uh, lost four of their Marines and Nigerian soldiers as well. Um, you know, so I, I think that if you look at this kind of attack, you, you wouldn't say that um, uh, there is any degree of success which is going on. My opinion would have been uh, that there would have been an extension of the multinational joint tax force rather than having a separate G5. But that's up to the French. Yeah. Well, some analysts say the rise in attacks in the region could be due to the Islamic State group leader al Baghdadi's call in a recent audiovisual speech where he called on them to intensify attacks against France and its allies in the Sahel region. Do you agree with this? It is very possible that uh, the charismatic nature of uh, Baghdadi, who appeared very recently, you know, may have uh, given some kind of adrenaline for the Islamic State of the Greater Sahel, or perhaps any Al Qaeda other faction to, you know, target the French, because he he principally. You know, called for attack against the French and their allies in the Sahel. Mm. So that could be possible. But also, we've had recent attacks. Uh, we recently had the uh, capture, uh, the sorry, the the, uh, the release of, uh, of of the hostages that were kidnapped by some of these jihadist groups, which led to two French soldiers being killed. So it could also be a reprisal attacks from these factions. But again, you know, you're right. The um, appearance of Al Baghdadi, you know, could have given them more you know, uh, uh, reason to carry out these recent attacks which we're talking about.
All right, then, security expert David Otto, thank you so much for speaking to us on Network Africa. Thank you. In North Africa now, talks on moving Sudan towards a civilian rule have been suspended for three days by the country's military leaders who are demanding that protesters clear all roadblocks. In a televised statement, the Transitional Military Council says barricades outside a designated zone in Khartoum should be removed. The setback comes hours after the TMC and the opposition agreed to a three-year transition period to civilian rule. Protesters at the Sudanese capital sit-in denounce a declaration by the Transitional Military Council to halt ongoing negotiations for 72 hours after violence erupted on Wednesday. <laughs> Honestly, the decision issued to halt negotiations is a big shock to all the citizens of Sudan. The military council is trying to seize control. This is like the devil wanting to take over. Sudan has been run by the military council since longtime president Omar al Bashir was toppled last month, but it has struggled to return the country to normalcy. Protesters emboldened by Mr. Bashir's downfall have continued to stage a huge sit-in outside military headquarters in the capital, demanding full civilian government. At least nine people were wounded on Wednesday when Sudanese forces used live ammunition to clear demonstrators from central Khartoum. The head of Sudan's Transitional Military Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al buhan accuses the demonstrators of breaking an understanding on de-escalation while talks were underway and says protesters are disrupting life in the capital. It is our responsibility in front of God, our people, our army and our revolution to decide the following, halting negotiations for 72 hours so as to create the correct climate to continue the agreement, removing all barricades outside the sitting zone, opening the railway to supply the state that has suffered from the depletion of the petroleum and supply products. The violence has cast a shadow on talks that had appeared on course to reach a deal on forming a joint military civilian body to run the country for a three-year transition period until presidential elections. Let's get more on this story from a lecturer at the University of Lagos and African Affairs Analyst, Dr. Okwi Okbala. Thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa. So what do you make of Sudan's military council suspending talks with the opposition for three days in a bid to get them to stop protesting? Well, I think it's part of maneuvering. Um, they're sort of sizing up the opposition or rather the, the protesters to know how determined they are, how organized they are, mm. how long they can persevere. So I, I believe that the, the, the Transitional Military Council, they don't actually want to stop the talks, mm. but they want to have the, a bit, get an upper hand in the negotiation that we follow, because the negotiation is getting to the crucial side. Mm. They've decided on the issue of the, the, the making body, legislative body, now is it the supreme or the sovereign council, yeah. which is the most critical arm of governance. So uh, before that, they want to, I mean, of course, the protesters are insisting they should have the upper hand. The military already have considered the majority to the protesters in the lawmaking body. Now they want to, they want to know if they can possibly have the upper hand in that negotiation. Do you think the military council is perhaps trying to buy time? Um, they were trying to buy time uh, to know if they are not, if um, the, the protesters are not well organized, mm. if they can be distracted, if they, 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 they will run out of gas, then of course they will exploit it. Yeah. Remember that um, the Arab Spring, there are several reverses of the Arab, Arab Spring in several countries like Tunisia, even Egypt. You know, the, the protesters didn't get what they were bargaining. Mm -hmm. And with the benefit of hindsight, these um, protesters in uh, Sudan are a bit more vigilant mm -hmm. to make sure that, no, yeah. it's not just 
there. We've we, been at it for yeah, quite a while. Yeah, what follows the exit of the dictator is important, not just the dictator leaving this, mm. this stage. Well, these protests have turned very violent now. In his televised address, the TMC leader called on protesters to dismantle roadblocks, open bridges, and stop provoking security forces. But is this enough justification for the violence and deaths recorded in the past few days? There is no justification for the amount of death that have been recorded, especially uh, well. Um, but you see, the, you may also understand that both leaders are facing pressure. The military, there, are, there must be hawks within the military that want the, 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 the Transitional Military Council to be more, I mean, to be more aggressive, to be more violent, to, to stop, to use maximum force to stop the protest. There will also be protesters that say, look, don't, don't, don't give an inch to the military. So, but it's for the leaders of both sides to know that, I mean, the, for the sake of the country, there are certain concessions that you need to make. Um, the, the, the leader of the Transitional Military Council said, part of the complaint they had was that, look, we agreed that there are protest zones, mm -hmm. and that it was an agreement. We also, we also expect that as, agreement, as we are reaching agreement on key issues, like that you should begin to de-escalate de the process. Are like dismantle certain bugs and all that, and they are not doing that. Mm -hmm. So that is their complaint. But then the, the, the protesters are also trying to be vigilant because if they lose the, that um, advantage, the, what, the main reason why they are making those concessions is because they cannot rule easily without this, without yeah. this book of So they want to. So uh, there is, the, what we have is that there must be a, an appropriate trade off between the need to encourage the military to continue the process and the need to be vigilant so that the gains will not be reversed. Mm -hmm. Which actually leads me to my next question. How do you think the protesters, and especially the opposition leaders, how do you think they should react to this demand by the uh, military council? I mean, the, 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 the best reaction is discussion, engagement. You know, the, the, the most, they must, must make it clear that, look, we, we, we have nothing against you personally, we want, if your interest is to move the country forward, that is also our interest. Um, then let us agree. As we are making an agreement, we we'll keep de-escalating the system. But there are minimal things that we must take back to, to, to people who started this process in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it's, there must, and then they must find the, like I said before, the appropriate trade-off between trying to encourage the military to continue the process and then trying to make sure that there are no reverses. Mm. Because if you, just, if, you, if you let their guards down, yeah. that the, the situation can be quickly reversed. But, if, um, but then, if you can't also be seen to be negotiating in bad faith, that you, you, you must appear to be negotiating in good faith, that look, well, I, if you do the right thing, we, we will also cooperate with you. Yeah, I want to get your thoughts on what, you, um, what your thoughts are on the agreement that was agreed between the TMC and the opposition leaders. Well, I think um, I think is from what has happened. I know, because the majority of the, the they've agreed for three years. Initially, the protesters wanted four years. The military transitional council wanted two years. Mm -hmm. the, the, the middle of the road, they agreed on the middle of the road, which is three years, which is okay. And then the, uh, within that period, I mean, the the lawmaking body will be dominated two thirds will, will be civilians. Mm -hmm. Only only one third will be military, and I think that's okay too. Then the critical side is the person that wields the ultimate power, which is the, the sovereign council. And that is where, that's why the, these maneuvers are happening, because those are the ones that hold the levers of power. Yeah. Um, so I, I believe that by that, by the time that, that one crystallizes, that's when yeah. you will now say whether you have been a success or, or you have or been not. a disappointment. All right, we'll have to wait and see. Dr. Okwi Okpala, African Affairs Analyst, thank you so much for speaking to us on Network Africa. It's always my pleasure. Still to come on the program. A South African woman, Sarai Kumalo, becomes the first black African woman to scale Mount Everest, the world's highest mountain. To stay with us. <laughs>